Half in the bag. Fuck movies. Hello and welcome to Half in the Bag. I'm Mike. And I'm Jay. And we just saw Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2. After 18 years of being utterly ordinary, I finally felt that I could shine. I was born to be a vampire. It's so beautiful. We're in the same temperature now. I didn't expect you to seem so... you? In preparation for seeing the new Twilight movie, we did uh, absolutely nothing. It's sort of the exact opposite of when we saw the Resident Evil sequel, yes. where we did a marathon of all the previous films. <laughs> this one, we intentionally avoided watching any of them and just went in colds, and we have never seen any of the Twilight movies. Right. They, they weren't very difficult to avoid. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, we went into Breaking Dawn Part 2, completely cold, not knowing anything about the series. So we will probably have a lot of questions that come up during our discussion, questions you might be able to answer. So when a question comes up, we're going to put it up on the screen, and you can respond by uh, sending an email to twilightquestions at redlettermedia.com. And uh, we will respond to your answers probably in the next episode. So uh, your, your answer to our Twilight question might be featured in our next discussion. Please help us. Thank you. I have to report a crime. The Collins, they've done something terrible. It's my daughter. The Volturi think Renez is an immortal child. She was born, not bitten. She grows every single day. Oh my. So let's start our Twilight discussion. It sucked. You just did. So, Jay, what did you think of Twilight Part 5, Breaking Dawn Part 2? This is probably the most baffling studio release I've seen in quite some time. Yeah, I would say. I, would uh, I mean, we watch a lot of bad movies, and uh, we watch a lot of low-budget stuff, and we describe that as baffling quite frequently, mm -hmm. uh, usually on a technical level where we're just like, why is the camera placed there? Like, this is, you know, just weird things where you're just like, what? This is the first big studio movie where I've had that same reaction. I think I spent a lot of the running time just kind of going, like staring at the screen, just sort of baffled yeah. by what was happening. From what I understand, these movies are very uh, slavishly faithful to the books. So I guess we'll just blame Stephanie Meyer for that, for the storytelling and how bizarre it is. Well, to me, you know, obviously you mentioned neither of us have seen any of the other films. Uh, they come off as movies from books, like where it might have worked better in the printed form. Like some of the literal translation from things that happened in the books yeah. comes off as just weird. Like at uh, the end, they, the, the main characters bring different vampires from around the world. You know, and they just sort of like, two girls from the Amazon show up, and then at the end these like Brazilian rainforest people come, and, and they just sort of like, zoop, they show up and they're like, what? Yeah, where, where how'd did they these, get there? How did they get there? And, you know, and I could see in a, in a book logic like, and then the so-and-sos came from here to join us and blah, blah, blah. And, and a, a lot of it is conversational dialogue that doesn't seem to have a specific location that's needed for it. Like mm. movies, movies are um, are visual. Yeah. You know, like we're gonna have this scene in this you know location because it's gonna. The book um, and the movie of this particular Twilight movie, it all takes place in one house. Yeah, that was the weirdest thing to me. I was thinking while watching it, I was like, this feels like a TV show. Mm -hmm. You have your small little cast of characters, and it was weird because it all takes place in this house or in the woods surrounding this house. Yeah. And scenes would start with all the characters just sort of standing there. Mm -hmm. And then a character would come in and a conversation would start. Yeah. And I was, I was thinking, like, what were these characters doing before this scene started? They're all just sort of standing there awkwardly. The movie looked like a furniture catalog <laughs> where you have these... The these Ikea ad. Yeah, these... these vacant, sort of pretty people just standing next to couches and, yeah. and uh, coffee tables. Reading a book, like, yeah. posing for a furniture catalog. <laughs> well, that, that was a difficult aspect because I think I was like that too. I'm like, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out the logic because I didn't expect the movie to, but it would have been nice to have a little recap. I, I think they assume that 99% of their audience have seen one of them, yeah. at least one of the movies before, so there was no recap. 
at all other than what I knew just by osmosis. Bella is pregnant and has a baby or yeah. something and th th gets ripped out of her stomach. I I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm trying to like figure out the logic of what's happening. Like, do all these people live together in this house? Do all these werewolves just, they, wh where is this house? Yeah. But is it just a house that they built, like a vamp secret vampire house? And they're all just, they all just live in there and just cohabitate with each other like a like a like jersey shore like the vampires. jersey shore like the real world like uh, house <laughs> they all just live in there and they read books all day and they just wait for eternity for something to happen uh, i don't i don't know yeah and then they give bella and um uh whatever his name is edward uh, edward his their own house and it's all furnished and stuff they're like we we got you a house we built you a house and they're like thanks and they go in there and then they never go back to the house yeah and then the they rest, fuck in the house they fuck in the house <laughs> and which which is another question uh, i had uh, is that if vampires don't their hearts don't beat and they don't have blood flow that how does edward get an erection my favorite part of that sex scene was uh, the the visual representation of an orgasm at the end where it's oh, yeah. a close up of bella's face and they literally have like CGI magic pixie dusts yeah. glow around her face. The other question is not only physiologically, how does Edward maintain an erection, but how does he maintain an erection having sex with the mannequin Kristen Stewart? She's a pretty girl, but she has the personality of a brick. Um, I... The baby in the movie has a little, little creepy CGI face. Yes, yes. For that's, some reason. That's a thing that we won't ever understand. I, the theory behind it that we came up with was that they they took, at least I think, they took the little girl's face, the baby grows up and becomes a it, seven, it ages eight year old. rapidly. Yeah. yeah, and they took the little girl's face and sort of made it onto the baby's face, de-aged de it and made the features look like the little girl. Um, for some reason, but the baby does end up look like looking like a fake CGI baby yeah. with like a weird, creepy face that doesn't. It's like it reminded me of those um, those ads for uh, E Trade. Yo, what's up, people? Well, I think whatever budget these movies have, I don't think a lot of it goes towards special effects. Gee, why do you think that? Oh, because the special effects were fucking horrible. But the baby specifically, it seems like there's parts where they didn't bother to animate the CGI face. Yeah, and it's just like a still image of this baby just going. Yeah, yeah. And then occasionally it blinks. I'm, I'm hoping that the reason was artistic. Like, we want the baby's face to kind of look like the little girl's face. Not, we don't feel like having a baby on set. Mm. And we're just going to get this rubber thing that kind of looks like a baby and then imprint a, a face on it. Yeah. Because a baby on set means, you know, you have to have, oh, I don't know. You have to have baby insurance. Baby insurance, yeah. What if someone drops the baby, the actor drops the baby, you know, the baby insurance. Or maybe they just couldn't find any parents that would allow their child to be featured in a film where Taylor Lautner wanted to fuck a baby. <laughs> was that what happened? Mm-hmm. Taylor Lautner was in love with the little CGI baby face. Holy shit, I love this movie. Maintaining our secret has never been more imperative. What is it, Alice? The Voltori, they're coming for us. Yeah, the, the CGI baby, and you add to that everything else, looks so fucking cheap. Mm-hmm. He yeah. sees better special effects on TV shows. Mm -hmm. And I'm like thinking the whole time, is this a feature film? The, the driving scenes were all like, I mean, they do this in every movie, but they're all green screened or, or real projection. They were projection. noticeably fake. In noticeably this one. fake. There wasn't even an attempt to add like sound effects of other cars driving yeah, or the road. Yeah. It was just dead silent. And it looked like Seinfeld, like when they drive around in the car on Seinfeld. <laughs> There's the, the fake baby, this, the, the, the bad looking cars, the, the bad looking running effects. The, the, the bad looking wolves. Yeah. The wolves look like cartoons. <laughs> uh, they look really bad. And then there's a big epic battle at the end, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, that takes place on a, a, a frozen lake clearing. And um, obviously it's all green screened. They're yeah. not, they didn't really have the actors out in the middle of the winter. And, and it just everything looked so cheap. And, and watching it, I kept thinking of like other vampire movies from recent history, like um, I don't know, the uh, interview with the vampire, and uh, I, re I actually liked uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula. Visually, but, there's some great stuff in that yeah, movie. Yeah, the visual and performances, but the way those movies look, they look so rich, they look so real, and this just looks like a cheap TV show. Yeah. And, and I think they know that. They know their audience. Their audience is 14-year-old girls. 
that that cry over the Bella and Edward love story, and yeah. everything else is is lower in the priority rung. Well, speaking of the love story, that was something for the majority of the movie. I kind of forgot that that's what the Twilight movies are about. Mm. Is that that love story between those two characters? I completely forgot about it. They fuck at the beginning of the movie, and then everybody stands around for 90 minutes, and then there's a big epic battle, and then the movie ends with them like, oh, you're the love of my life. I was like, oh, that's right. Yeah. This is a love story between these two. Yeah. But there's zero chemistry between them. Yeah. Which was interesting because they you know, dated in real life, and there's absolutely no chemistry between Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart. No, no. But none of these actors, Robert Pattinson is, seems like he could be a pretty good actor. Did your Twilight experience turn out <laughs> to be what you expected? Oh. He's, yeah, he's one of the, the main characters in this, or if he was in a better movie, I could see yeah. him maybe pulling something off. Yeah. I haven't seen Cosmopolis, the David Cronenberg movie. I really want to. Yeah. Um, he's in that. Vampire baby. Then you have like Michael Sheen, who plays one of the main bad guys, who's just hamming it up yeah. Like he's on a, on a Saturday morning cartoon show. Allow me, my dear. So let's talk a little bit about the plot to this movie. For those of you who don't know, uh, there is barely a plot. No, I, I can't remember the last time I saw a major movie where so little happens for the majority of the running time. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, uh, it's kind of fascinating. Yeah. There was a certain point in the movie, in the middle, where I stopped being baffled and sort of entertained by how bad it was and just got really, really bored. Yeah, yeah. It got really tedious in the middle section of the movie. Yeah. Where I was like, this is really all it's going to be. Yeah. I think I, I leaned over to you at one point and I said, like an hour into the movie, and I said, when is the movie going to start? Right, right. Because uh, generally the plot is Edward and Bella have a baby and past vampire children, children who are turned into vampires, they, they don't know how to conceal their vampireness. They just eat, eat people. Yeah. And it exposes the hidden vampires to the normies that want to kill them. So uh, if there's a vampire child, the vampire gods or uh, leaders or whatever, the, the, they come out and they kill the child and they burn it alive or something. Um, so Edward and Bella have a baby and they think it's going to be a vampire baby. Vampire baby. Some other vampire girl sees the vampire baby. Vampire baby. For some reason she's standing on a mountaintop and just happens to see the baby jump up. Yeah, what was she doing there? I don't know. She just was kind of there. sightseeing. Mm. And then she runs away and runs back to uh, Italy to tell Lord Voldemort or whatever that she found a baby vampire and that it, uh, maybe there's a past. Maybe she was jealous or something of them having a baby. But anyway, they all say they have to come get the baby. And then then 45 minutes go by, and they talk about how they're coming to get the baby. Yeah. Well, our, our good vampire characters, they decide that they need to get witnesses mm. uh, that know that the baby is not a threat. Yeah. Uh, so they travel all over the world, and they get all these different witnesses. Uh, but I don't understand why they would even have to do that if the bad vampires are going to show up and see for themselves anyway. So they could have more people there for an epic battle. For an epic battle. Well, the best part is that they go all around the world and they get all these different vampires from different countries and they're all the most stereotypical. Mm -hmm. Like there's the this, this Scottish vampires that have like the little fisherman's cap and the red hair and the scarf. Um, there's the, the, at the very end, the Native American vampires they, they show were, up. They were Brazilian. Brazilian like, vampires. Okay. Uh, South American But something. they show up in like a little loincloth. Yeah, yeah. They look like Tonto and uh, <laughs> Pocahontas. They show up. And it's like, did they travel all the way there dressed like that? Yeah. How do vampires move around the planet um, other than running? Because we were thinking about this and um, how do you run across the ocean? if you're coming from overseas, and even at the speeds that they're running, like they show them go like this. Yeah. If you calculate that and do the math and figure out the exact mileage, it would probably take them a, a solid week or so to run across the world. Yeah. You're not going that fast. Maybe about as fast as a, a jet airplane. So may, maybe 14, 15 hours of, of running from, you know, across the entire earth. I, but how do vampires travel? Do they run to the nearest bus station? And then, or, or do they run to the nearest airport? Mm. And then, like, how does Lord Voldemort get on a plane? 
Do you think he got on the plane with that robe on? Yeah. All of them were wearing those robes and they boarded the plane. Did the, did the, the native Brazilian vampires get on the plane with the loincloth on? Well, you would think, like, the whole idea is that they want to kill this baby because they don't want to be exposed as vampires. Yeah. Um, you would think if they are running across the world, yeah. they're kind of exposing themselves pretty heavily that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They have to run. Or wearing uh, the giant death robes. Yeah. They have to run somewhere, yeah. uh, and probably along civilization or a major highway. So how do they travel? Oh my. Creating an immortal child has long been outlawed, and it's met with a severe form of punishment. Death. What is it, Alex? The Voltori. They're coming for us. So, yeah, it's established early on. Uh, Edward and Bella have a baby. The bad vampire clan thinks the baby is a threat and they want to kill it. So they're going to travel to uh, Washington State, which is where they live, and, mm. and they're going to uh, confront them. Mm. Uh, the good guys decide to get witnesses. And then the rest of the movie is them waiting around for witnesses to show up waiting for the bad clan to show up so they can have their epic confrontation at the end. Yeah. And, and nothing of consequence happens during that period of the movie. No, yeah, it's there's no... It's scene after scene of people standing around... And talking. And talking. It's also established in this film, maybe others, that vampires, in addition to being vampires, have X-Men powers. Oh, yes. When did Stephanie Meyer add in the X-Men powers like a hack writer she is? Yeah, we were thinking about that because the whole movie kind of feels like it's making it up as it goes along. Like, oh, and then they all have their own little special power. Yeah. One character can shoot flames. One character can see the future. Yeah. The Egyptian guy had the power over element. Yes, yes. He was like uh, the storm. Right. So at what point in the series was this introduced and why? Um, uh, 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 uh. I think the Cullen's greatest asset is their ability to bring in other vampires they've met around the world. I think she wrote a book called Twilight, and it was about a teenage girl that falls in love with the vampire at her local high school. And then, then she said, oh. Oh, this is popular. I better write more books. Yeah. Well, okay, so, so no characterization, uh, and the, the performances are terrible. So you have bad actors performing bad characters. Performing bad dialogue. Performing bad dialogue in a J.C. Penney's catalog. So yeah, uh, then another 45 minutes goes by where it's just scene after scene of characters talking about how the bad vampires are coming and they're going to, to battle and they have to prepare for it. The movie's over three hours at this point yeah. of, of characters standing around in living rooms. Um, and then finally we get to our epic confrontation. The bad uh, vampire people are lined up. Mm -hmm. The good vampire people are lined up on the other side. And then they talk for another 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, about something. That kid is bad and we have to kill it. Yeah. We don't yeah. want you to. No, but the kid is bad. Yeah. The whole confrontation is just about the fact that it's like a, like a 70s sitcom. It's all about just a misunderstanding. Why don't they just say, no, the kid isn't what you think it is. Oh, okay, bye. I guess that's kind of what happens. That is what happens. If you, if you ignore the, the 20 minutes of uh, pointless action that has nothing to do with the real story. Yeah, I which don't know is, if we should spoil that for people. Yes, we should. Okay. This giant epic battle happens that we use this word a lot, but this is a very appropriate use of it, uh, is schlock. Mm -hmm. It's glorious, wonderful schlock. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the ending of this movie. A as did I, yes. They, they, they're basically like uh, two sides on a battlefield and they send out their representatives to talk, which is what happens. And, and uh, the bad guy, Lord Voldemort, is that his name? Is that from something? That's from Harry Potter. What? Voldemort is from Harry Potter. What is Harry Potter? It's a book. It's one book. So anyways, he's like, he's like, bring me the child. Um, and then he does this, this creepy laugh and he goes, <laughs> Oh, that was a what the fuck moment where yeah. everyone in the theater went, yeah. what? I really liked his performance. I did he too. He was a creepy he, vampire. Well, he looked like he didn't give a shit. The actor looked like he just was like, whatever, this movie's retarded yeah. and I'm going to be goofy and see if they let me get away with it. Yeah. And they let him get away with it. It probably says, 
bad vampire guy laughs at Baby, and then and he does the, the most bizarre, out of place laugh. It was, yeah, and the, the whole crew started laughing, and they're like, "Just leave it, just leave it. It's gonna be great." Um, That's what I picture a lot of this movie being like: like the director and people behind the camera, like snickering, mm -hmm. like we're getting away with this. Yeah, they they keep talking about the baby, and and then uh, the, the, eventually they can't reach a compromise, so it becomes like what you're expecting to happen. A, a grandiose battle um, verse of good vampires versus 2,700 evil vampires. Why did they bring so many vampires if all they were going to do was kill a baby? I, I don't know. But anyways, an epic battle takes place. The, the good vampires, um, the vampires from all around the world, team up with Bella and um, Lugosi, and they all start fighting, um, and this big battle takes place. And it's uh, it's... The the wonder wonderment of schlock. This is where the movie goes off the rails in a really wonderful way. Yeah. Where uh, uh, apparently, despite the fact that vampires are super strong, their neck muscles are not strong. No. Because there's like 15 decapitations in a five minute span. It's just character after character getting its head their head popped off. Mm -hmm. um, and and poor little Dakota Fanning gets fed to a wolf. Yeah. They just throw the thrower at the wolf and say, eat this, this the, character. The best part outside of the movie was um, the, the main villain gets his head ripped off. Jacob, or not Jacob, Edward jumps on his shoulders and starts to rip on his head and then Bella knocks him down and they go, and they rip his head off. Yeah. And there was a, like a five-year-old girl in the row behind, in front of us and she starts going like this. Yeah, like yeah. it was really great seeing small children applaud such horrible violence in yeah. the theater. Yeah. There wasn't any blood though. No, that's how they got around it. Yeah. But even for a PG-13, just seeing heads getting ripped off, there was one part where a character, they don't just rip off the head, they rip off the top of the head. Yeah. They put their, their hands in his mouth and rip it off at the jawline. You see his cheeks. And you see it go and rip off. Yeah. That's, that's horrible. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. Though. Even without blood, it's horrible. Well, I liked it too, uh, because it was something that was actually happening yeah. for a change. Um, but for a PG-13, that's pretty graphic. You mm -hmm. see the skin rip apart around the mouth, yeah. the head pops off, um, and then there's a character that punches the ground so hard that a giant cavern opens up, and you have vampires and, and wolves that getting goes thrown down into, into the, it. the core of the earth. Yeah, you yeah. see molten lava. Mm -hmm. They just start throwing characters into it. Because uh, molten lava exists 100 feet below the surface. Yeah. And then this whole battle goes on, and a bunch of our main characters get killed. A bad guy gets killed. And then we discover that it was uh, all a dream. Yeah. Or it was all... Uh, a, a, a premonition. A premonition that the, the psychic vampire put into the bad guy's head. Yeah. So... The only thing that happened in the movie didn't happen. Yeah. And then they say, oh, things might get this violent and horrible. Never mind, see you yeah. later. And then everybody just leaves. It yeah. reminded me of uh, Anchorman. There's a section in Anchorman where our four main characters are walking down this alley and then this giant newscaster brawl breaks out and it's like mm. this epic Braveheart type battle with all these uh, oh, rival yeah. news stations. And then it ends and they, they just say, wow, that got out of hand quickly. It was a have your cake and eat it too moment. Yeah. Because I guess the book just ends with them leaving. It, it was a good decision on the part of the producers and the filmmakers to add that in because what a fucking boring movie if there was no uh, an action packed conclusion. Can you imagine if it didn't have yeah. that and the movie was they all confront and then they say, oh, never mind, see you later. Yeah, the, the problem is, uh, ironically, is th that there is no story. No, and that's, I mean, obviously, this is the second half mm -hmm. of one full story because the Breaking Dawn book is just one book, it's one story. But there's not enough material in this movie for one movie, let no. alone two. It, it felt like this was one fourth of the book that they stretched into a feature film. It, yeah. it felt it felt like there wasn't a lot of material and they had to stretch it into a feature because they wanted to break the final film up into two parts to get double the box office money. Oh, you don't think they broke it up into two movies just because they wanted to uh, maintain the integrity of the story? No, no. Oh, you're being sarcastic. Are you saying that you think they did this purely for financial reasons? Uh, yes, I am, yeah. That's what I'm saying. The, the, yeah. Vampire baby. The one silver lining here is that the, the, the world is your oyster if you are a con artist. 